a hyena pup, a couple of lion cubs, and a meerkat. Friends? Okay, real talk. Hyenas and lions aren't exactly known for getting along. And under normal circumstances, a meerkat would merely be a snack for these guys. No, this isn't a Disney film. It's Lobie's Predator Park in South Africa. True story. These guys met when they were just babies. Kala arrived as an orphan after her mom was caught in a farmer's trap. Safari and Susie were rejected by their mother at birth. And little Pockle here was found wandering alone without his family. He was very cold. He was almost on the edge of dying. And I pulled him through. He might not be an apex predator like his pals, but you'd have to tell him that. I think Pockle thinks he's in charge. He's rough with them. He likes to play. But if they get rough with each other, like the lion cubs and the hyena, then he will come in between. After a couple sad twists of fate, rather than hunt each other, these would-be foes would sooner share a plate. At least when Pockle has his way. When he's hungry, he will turn around and push his butt towards them. So he's pushing them out of the way so he can eat first. And they must be submissive. Yeah, he's the dominant one. Pockle's become somewhat of an intake coordinator for the sanctuary. When Kala first arrived here alone, it was Pockle who made her feel at home. Pockle! Pockle! Come, Pockle! Pockle and Kala like to play with each other. Pockle likes to jump on top of Kala's on his neck, or he will clamp down on him and think he can hold him back. And when activity time rolls around, you can really see the Napoleon complex come out. To stimulate curiosity, the cubs and pup are given large ostrich eggs, and Puckle, the much smaller chicken egg. But of course, the little one wants what the bigger kids have. And what Puckle wants, Puckle takes. Ah, it won't last long. The orphans are growing fast, and soon their predatory instincts may kick in. Puckle's managed to avoid injuries so far, but Kala is starting to try out her strong jaws, which are designed to crush bones. Once she's full grown, her bite will be five times stronger than ours. So just imagine what it could do to a meerkat, even by accident. Meanwhile, the twins will soon be 200 times bigger than Pockle, which means their wrestling days are numbered. In a few weeks, the natural born predators will be relocated to larger enclosures fit for larger carnivores. Carla and the lions and Pockle, they all stay together now. They are friends. But when they're a bit bigger, size is going to be a big issue. They need to go back with their own species, so that's difficult for them to be together forever. Okay, so they're not destined for your typical run-of-the-mill Hollywood ending. But come on, even Disney couldn't script a friendship quite like this. A dog and a turkey? Who'd have ever thought these two wildly different creatures might have anything to talk about, let alone understand each other? They might look like they're arguing, but it's actually more like two siblings bickering. How did these two peas in a pod find themselves in the same home? It's quite a tale. Let's start with Blossom, a broad-breasted white turkey who is destined to be the main chorus at someone's Thanksgiving. For her first five weeks of life, this little bird grew up with hundreds of other chicks on a brood farm. When the turkeys were sent off for the next stage to be fattened up, Blossom was somehow left behind. The farmer's daughter found her and pleaded for little Blossom's life to be spared. They gave her to an animal shelter where Deputy Director Abby Hubbard offered to give her a home. But there was one potential hurdle to overcome. Abby's dog, Minnow. I wasn't worried about how Minnow would view Blossom. I just wasn't sure what Blossom would think of Minnow. My first interactions with Blossom were at our animal shelter and she was terrified. This is the moment that Blossom arrived at our home. Minnow walked right up 
and Blossom saw her and she was instantly comfortable with her. It didn't take long for Blossom to find her comfort zone in her new surroundings. She wasted no time claiming Minnow's bed as her own. As you can see, their friendship was quick to blossom. She just seemed like a different bird at that point. So this is their first cuddle. It was another moment for Blossom where she really relaxed. Now you might be wondering, do turkeys make for good house pets? The answer is a pretty hard no, most of the time. They're impossible to house train and typically only bond with other turkeys. When she came into our family, she was right for learning. But Minnow had a special touch. We might never know why, but it could have had something to do with her own origin story. Minnow was born on a dog meat farm in South Korea. Along with 22 others, she too was destined to become food. But before she was slaughtered, the Humane Society of the United States swooped in and rescued her and her pals as they shut down the farm. Only five months old at the time, her life would have turned out a whole lot differently. She was quite fearful when she arrived at our shelter uh, for adoption, and I just immediately fell in love with her. And because I like working with fearful animals, um, I felt particularly drawn to helping her. She knows she's safe and loved, and now a very important member of a family. It was quite special that what I had been able to do for Minnow, Minnow had then been able to do for Blossom in making her comfortable in our home. Like any siblings, they squabble sometimes, sure. Minnow can be protective of her toys, and Blossom's somewhat of an antagonist. It's kind of like the way my little brother teased me. Blossom likes to put up a bit of a fight. And so then she'll get worked up and you'll see her feathers puff up and she'll kind of arch her neck and um, make her little turkey warning sounds. Minnow's put up with a lot. I think she's come to understand that that's how Blossom communicates and she tolerates it. And it's all part of being in a relationship, right? Come on, Blossom! <laughs> Come on! Minnow takes her role seriously. Blossom can get scared from time to time. See that vulture overhead? Has her shaking in her feathers. She often looks to the sky. She's worried about the birds of prey, which is typical as an instinct. Are you showing Bloss what to do? But Minnow's instinct is to have her pals back at all times. Minnow has always been really good at kind of sensing what Blossom needs and being a security blanket for her. This family's first Thanksgiving was as special as any you could be invited to. And rather than be served as dinner, these two lucky ducks were just served dinner as VIPs. That was it, it was a done deal. She was home, she was part of our family, and I think we were all just <laughs> as thrilled as could be.